This video will focus on the preparation of a CVP income statement, which we will need to prepare CVP analysis. Let's take a look at the components. Again, in order for us to prepare a CVP income statement, we need sales volume. We also need the unit selling price, the variable cost per unit, and our total fixed cost. All right. In this video or in this chapter, we're going to assume a single product. Therefore, we're going to ignore sales mix. Right. We're going to actually incorporate sales mix in the next chapter when we have multiple products. The following assumptions underline CVP analysis. I'm not going to read each of these items. The only one I want to point out is that all units produced are sold. That is the assumption that we are making. CVP analysis is important for decision making. Management often wants this information reported in a CVP income statement format for internal use. This statement classifies cost as variable or fixed and reports a contribution margin. Contribution margin is the amount of revenue remaining after deducting variable cost. It is often stated as both a total amount and on a per unit basis. Right. Net income will be the same under either method when all units produced are sold. Right. When you prepare that traditional income statement, if you remember, you start with sales, you subtract your cost of goods sold to arrive at gross profit. From there, we subtract our selling and administrative expenses to arrive at net income. We will use Vargo Video Company to illustrate a CVP income statement. Vargo Video produces cell phones. The selling price of a phone is $500. The unit variable cost is $300. The term cost includes all costs related to production and sale of the product. So it will include both manufacturing cost as well as selling and administrative cost. All right, our total monthly Fixed costs are $200,000, and again, that includes both manufacturing cost as well as selling an administrative. All right, before we get to the CVP income statement, I just want to go over um, or review some concepts, specifically how a cost behaves. That unit variable cost of $300, I want you to remember when, when we defined a variable cost, we said that it remains the same per unit at every level of activity, but it varies in total in direct proportion to changes in the level of activity. Again, if our sales increases, our total variable cost will increase, right? But our unit variable cost will remain the same. All right, let's talk about fixed cost. If you remember, we said these costs are going to remain constant in total, regardless of the level of activity. Again, so if we are selling 1,600 units, again, our fixed costs are 200,000. If we sell 2,000 units, our fixed costs will remain the same or constant. They will remain at $200,000. A traditional and CVP income statements will report the same amount of net income. In this instance, we have net income of 120000 Now, just keep in mind, we are assuming that all units produced are sold. A traditional income statement, however, does not classify cost as variable or fixed, and therefore does not report a contribution margin. Right? When we are preparing that CVP income statement, we need four things. Right? We need an activity level or sales volume. We need a selling price per unit, a variable cost per unit, and a fixed cost. Again, if you take that activity level or sales volume of 1,600 and you multiply that by your selling price, you'll get your total sales of 800,000. Right? You can do a similar exercise, except you're gonna take the 1,600 and you're gonna multiply that by the variable cost per unit, which is 300, to come up with our total variable cost of $480,000. If you subtract your variable cost from your sales, you arrive at your contribution margin. If you subtract your fixed cost from your contribution margin, you'll arrive at net income. 
Again, I like to think of that contribution margin is the amount of money that's available to cover fixed cost and to generate a profit. Again, contribution margin is the amount that's available to cover fixed cost and contribute to income. The formula for calculating unit contribution margin is you take your selling price, you subtract your variable cost to arrive at your unit contribution margin. In this instance, it's $200. Unit contribution margin indicates that for every camcorder sold, the selling price exceeds the variable cost by $200. Fargo generates $200 per unit sold to cover fixed cost and contribute to net income. Because Fargo has fixed cost of $200,000, it must sell 1,000 cell phones, again, the $200,000 divided by 200, to cover its fixed cost. When the contribution margin equals the fixed cost, Vargo will report net income of zero. At this point, we refer to it as the break-even point. At this point, our total cost, our variable plus our fixed, will equal our total revenue. For every cell phone sold above the break-even point of 1,000 units, net income increases by the amount of the unit contribution margin, or $200. If we assume that Vargo sells one more cell phone for a total of 1,001 cell phones sold, Vargo will report net income of $200. Again, if they sell two cell phones above that break-even point of 1,000, then they would report net income of $400. Some managers prefer to use a contribution margin ratio in CVP analysis. The contribution margin ratio is the contribution margin expressed as a percentage of sales. It can be determined by dividing the unit contribution margin by the unit selling price. If you look at Vargo's numbers, can you take that unit contribution margin of 200? If you divide by the selling price of 500, you'll arrive at a contribution margin ratio of 40%. The contribution margin ratio indicates by how much every dollar of sales will increase income. The contribution margin ratio of 40% means that Vargo generates 40 cents of contribution margin with each dollar of sales. So 40 cents of each sales dollar is available to apply to fixed cost and to contribute to net income, which is very helpful in determining the effect of changes in sales on net income. If Fargo's sales increase by $100,000 or 200 units, net income will increase by $40,000. We can see this effect through a CVP income statement, which is on the right side of your screen. Managers can quickly determine increases in net income from any change in sales. The 40,000 increase in net income can be calculated on either a unit contribution margin basis, and if we take 200 units and multiply that by the unit contribution margin, which is $200, we will arrive at $40,000 of net income. We could also use the contribution margin ratio, in which case we simply take that 40% and multiply that by the increase in our sales dollars. In either instance, you will arrive at net income increasing by $40,000. In this exercise, you will determine the variable cost per haircut as well as the total monthly fixed cost. You will also determine net income using a CVP income statement. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video.